Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Zyre. Welcome back to another video on the channel for you guys today. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to lower your ping in Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 5. Having lower ping than other players puts you at an advantage. You can take walls easier, get shots off quicker, edit and build quicker, and aiming will feel more responsive, allowing you to hit more shots in game. Overall, having a lower ping in game will ensure that you win more fights. Now, lowering your ping is pretty easy, so make sure to watch the entire video to the end to ensure that you get the lowest ping possible. Make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more tips and tricks videos and yeah, let's get on with the video. So ping for the people who don't know is the reaction time of your connection or how fast you get a response after you sent out a request. For example, if I were to press a key on my keyboard, the ping registers how quickly that input is sent to the Fortnite servers and back to the screen to show a response. The reason why so many people in the Fortnite community or any gaming community for that matter want the lowest ping possible is because the lower the ping, the faster the reaction time of your connection and the faster the input from your keyboard or controller is sent to the server and back to you. Now, a good range for ping would have to be anywhere between 0 and 50 milliseconds. This is the best range that you guys want for your ping. Anything above 50 milliseconds and you're kind of in the danger zone. Now, there's players that constantly play on a high ping and they've adapted to it. They're used to that ping range. So yeah, anything in between 0 and 50 milliseconds is good. Anything from 50 milliseconds to 70 is still bearable. You can build and edit to some extent but just know that there's going to be a little delay in between the button presses but anything that's 75 and above is unplayable in my opinion when i first started playing fortnite i used to play on 60 ping on a good day i used to average in between 80 and 100 ping and i felt like i was being held back because of my internet connection it would spike into the 300 sometimes leaving my character model frozen in place i would end up getting killed by a lucky player passing by wondering why i'm just standing there trust me this left me frustrated and I would rage quit the game and not play for weeks. I finally got my internet connection sorted out and my ping ranges from 15 to 30 which is really good. I'm able to take walls with ease, edit pretty fast in my opinion, and be more consistent with my aim. So step one in lowering your ping in Fortnite is using an ethernet cable. An ethernet cable for those who don't know is a cable in which you plug one end into the back of your PC and the other end into your router or Wi-Fi extender. The ethernet cable is mainly used for internet access. The ethernet cable cable carries the internet signal, sending and receiving data packet requests, and it routes them to the router. Basically, the ethernet cable transfers internet from your router to your computer. Now, using an ethernet cable has a lot of benefits. Two main benefits of using an ethernet cable are consistent speed and a higher level of security. Let's first start off with consistent speed while using the cable. Since the ethernet cable is connected directly to your router, you're getting the highest speed possible. You won't have to worry about your family eating up the Wi-Fi because you'll be getting the highest speed from your router. Using the ethernet cable kind of prioritizes your system before everyone else's. The second is a higher level of security. With an ethernet connection, you will always be able to control the people on the Wi-Fi. You're prone to attacks while using Wi-Fi. Using an ethernet cable will make it harder for hackers to get your info. Now, when it comes to Fortnite, to keep it short and simple, using an ethernet cable will drastically reduce the amount of ping you get in-game. Now, you're probably wondering what ethernet cable you should get because there's so many different cables for so many different things. The one that I suggest you get is the cat 5 e cable the cat 5 e cable provides a substantially higher transfer speed than any of the older cables basically the cat 5 e cable is one of the fastest cables that you can use you can find them on amazon best buy walmart they're everywhere and they're cheap too i got my ethernet cable on amazon for about eight dollars ethernet cables are really reliable so i suggest picking up one as soon as possible now there's a lot of people out there that don't play close to their router and their parents or spouse don't want cables running through that House. The easiest fix to reduce high ping while playing on Wi-Fi is to move closer to your router. Wi-Fi signals can only go so far. If you're not in the range of the Wi-Fi router, then you will experience high ping. If moving your setup closer to your router isn't an option, then I suggest investing in a Wi-Fi extender. Growing up, this is what I used when I was playing on Wi-Fi. My Wi-Fi was terrible in my room until I got the Wi-Fi extender. It's a great item for those that can't move their entire setup closer to their router. So to go that extra step in making sure you 
you have the lowest ping possible, I suggest performing some Windows optimizations to ensure that your connection is the best that it can be. For the rest of the video, you will need an Ethernet cable, so check out the cable I just mentioned. I will leave links in the description to buy the cable for yourself. You will need an Ethernet cable if you want the lowest ping possible in Fortnite or any game, so just please invest in one. I can 100% guarantee you won't regret it. So before we can make changes in Windows, I advise you guys to make a restore point. A restore point is an image of the system's configuration and settings in the Windows registry that helps in restoring the system to an earlier date when the system was running perfectly. So basically, it's making a copy of your files within Windows, so whenever you want to revert the changes, you can easily do it by reverting the restore point. This is really important and you guys have to make sure you do this every time you make a change in the Windows registry or CMD. If you decide to skip this step and something goes wrong, then there's no saving your PC, so make sure you create a restore point. To make a restore point, go to the search and type create a restore point. Once the window opens, make sure your disk protection is on. If not, go to configure and click the checkbox that says turn on system protection. Now you should also see the disk space usage underneath the box you just checked, so set the max usage to whatever you want. This is how much of Windows is actually going to be backed up by the restore point. If you just want Windows to be backed up by the restore point, then set the max usage to 9%. This will only back up the Windows files. Once you're done, press apply and OK. Next, press create under the configuration button and give your restore point a name. I recommend naming it today's date or something that you know you can remember and press create. The creation process of the restore point should start. Once the process of creating the restore point is done, you're all set to make changes in Windows because now you have everything backed up. So the first optimization we're going to be performing is changing the DNS servers. We are going to be adding our own custom DNS. Right click on the ethernet symbol in the bottom right corner and press open network and internet settings. This tab should open. So press the network and sharing center and another window should pop up. Inside this window, press change adapter settings and another window is going to pop up. Right click on the ethernet network and press properties. Now follow exactly what I do on screen. Don't mess with anything else. Double click on internet protocol version 4 and you should be met with this window. Copy exactly what I do on screen. Once you're done, press OK and that's it for the first optimization. So the second optimization that we're going to be performing in today's video is changing the speed and duplex of our connection. For this one, what you're going to do is search device manager. Once this window opens, you should see a folder called network adapters. Click the drop down menu to reveal all your network adapters. Now find your network adapter and right click on it and go to properties and click advance. If you're having a hard time finding your network adapter, go through everyone that you have on your system until you find the one that has the advanced tab next to the general tab. So once you're in this window, look for speed and duplex. Your settings should be set on auto and negotiation. This is the default setting for the network adapter. Now this one is really easy. Click the drop down menu on the right side and select the highest possible speed in full duplex. Once you're done, press OK and you've correctly set the speed and duplex setting. Now there's going to be two programs that are going to help you with lowering your ping. The first one being TCP optimizer followed by exit lag. Let's first start off with the TCP optimizer. The TCP optimizer is an internet accelerator which can help drastically boost your internet speed. So what this program does is it optimizes internet related settings on your end of the connection so your PC can allow for faster throughput. So basically this software is going to optimize our internet connection. So go to the link in the description, it should take you to the TCP website. Once you're on the website, just press download and run the program as administrator. Once the program opens, make sure to drag the connection speed bar all the way to the right. Make sure you're using the right network adapter and make sure modify all network adapters is selected. Now there will be a link to another file in the description. This file is going to be the best settings for the software. Once you've downloaded the file, go back to the software and press file in the top left corner. Press import, find the export config file and open it. Once the config opens, press apply changes at the bottom and a new window should open. Check the backup box. This is used in case you want to go back to the default settings, so make sure you click it. Press OK and that's it. Now just restart your PC and you'll be all set. Now for the second software that we're going to be covering in today's video is exit lag. Exit lag helps lower your ping as well. You will need an ethernet cable for the software, so please buy one from the link in the description. Exit lag is a VPN service that connects you to the best possible servers to reduce game latency. If you have $5 laying around per month, then I suggest 
just using the software. Now you can try the software for three days. And if after the three days you want to continue using the software, then there's a monthly fee of $5, which I mentioned before. So you're probably wondering how this software works. Well, the software is a VPN service, like I said before, that specializes in routing game packets in the best possible servers. This service focuses on reducing game latency as opposed to providing features that are normally being offered by VPN services. So basically this software just connects you to the best possible server near you so you can get the best in-game connection possible. Now to download the software, go to the link in the description. It will take you to the exit lag website. On the website, press three days trial and sign up. You are going to have to check your email to verify. Press the download button on the website and the software should start downloading to your PC. Once the program downloads, just run through the installer and once it's done, it's going to ask you to reboot your PC. This is the most important step in downloading the software. Reboot your PC and come back to the video. Once you've rebooted your PC, open the program. It's going to ask you to sign in again. Once you've signed in, it's going to start analyzing the different routes. This can take some time, so just be patient. If the Windows Defender prompt pops up, just press allow. Then another prompt is going to pop up asking to disable energy efficient ethernet. Press yes and wait for the software to do its thing. Now search up the game of choice. For this video, I'm going to search up Fortnite and just follow what I do on screen. In the end, your software should look like this. Now open Fortnite. Once your game loads, check the software and you should see this. That's how you know the software is working. So that's going to be it for today's video. Make sure you subscribe for more. It's been your boy Zyre and I'm out. Peace.